This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Today is Jason Brewer, the CEO of Marula Mining. Following news that the company has entered into a binding term sheet with Kenyan mining uh, manganese operator Gems and Industrial Minerals Limited for a commercial interest in the Larisoro manganese mine in northern Kenya. Well, hi, Jason. Thanks for catching up with us today. How are you? I'm, I'm very well, Mark, and, and good afternoon to you too. So, a move into manganese, diversifying the portfolio even further. What's this all about? Look, manganese is another one of these critical metals, one of these uh, battery metals, and um, it fits our strategy. It's, it's clearly an asset here in East Africa. It's an asset that's actually producing. So it gives us an opportunity to get in there and start generating cash flow as our second producing mine uh, here in East Africa. And it gives us an opportunity to actually invest in both equipment, um, skills, um, and, and look to expand that production profile quite significantly over the next three to six months. So okay. it really ticks all the boxes for us. And, yeah, we're very keen and, and eager to get things moving then. So is it currently producing then? Yes, it's currently producing, albeit not at the sort of levels we would expect. The, mm -hmm. the operation actually started back in 2012. So okay. for the past 12 years, it's been operating intermittently, um, as with any kind of, as with many local companies here in Africa, it's been starved of capital. So okay. the equipment is poorly performing. Uh, they really haven't had the skill sets in terms of uh, mining, uh, in terms of geology as well. They, they, they don't have the sort of geological understanding of the deposit that, that you'd expect for a company already mining it. Uh, and the processing equipment is, is tired. So, you know, there's an opportunity for us very quickly to get in and make quite significant changes which will all flow through to the bottom line. Okay. And you're looking in the RNS there to take production to 5,000 to 10,000 tonnes of saleable manganese over the next three to six months. Have you any idea what that means in terms of um, cash flow wise? I don't know what the sort of. Go on. Yeah, look, Mark, historically, this operation, its total costs, its mining process, admin, sales, transportation costs came in and never averaged. Uh, 77 US per ton, per ton of ore delivered. Now that's with its, call it, its inefficiencies. Okay. Uh, planning. Now your, ben call it your benchmark price FOB for a 37% product is $3.91 per DMTU. So $3.91 per percentage uh, grade point. So okay. for a 37%, Products, you're getting about $145 to $150 a tonne. So based on the historical margins, you're making a 100% margin. You're making $75 a tonne. Sure. But we expect that to increase, um, the margin to increase, given what we expect to, to achieve in terms of its cost profile. But we also expect to be producing a higher grade product. So we've got okay. some sampling which is going to take place next week on site and testing in South Africa to see how we can increase that grade from that 37% call it medium grade benchmark okay. product up towards a 44%, which attracts an even higher premium as well. Okay, that's good. Get some uh, little uh, figures going around people's minds there. And you want to do this through the provision of one and a half million US dollars for new mining and processing equipment. So, I mean, two questions here. Have you got the funds to, to pay for that? Uh, and how quickly, what timescales are you looking at to get um, this, this new uh, equipment on site and, uh, and up and running? Yeah, Mark, I was down in um, Johannesburg at the beginning of this week. I uh, got down there early Monday morning uh, and actually got back here Tuesday night. So it was... Uh, a smash and grab, if you want to call it that. Uh, meetings, obviously, we, we some meetings there uh, with Marula, with equipment suppliers, equipment leases, uh, and with the team at QGC. So through those arrangements, we will have a uh, new crushing, a uh, new jaw crusher, new screens, the associated conveyors. Uh, we're looking at two ADTs, uh, uh, two new excavators, and three loaders. Okay. And they're due to get up here, call it mid-April, mid I think was the, the indicative timeframe there. So 
call it that second half of April, we will okay. have brand new equipment on site. Okay. Clearly, we're going to be on site now. Um, so we're going to be busy looking at you know, the new plant location because we're moving the plant. Uh, the old plant, uh, we're basically pushing aside. And the whole new, we're doing a whole new layout out there. So, you know, by the time that equipment gets up on site uh, mid-April, um, mm -hmm. we will have already started. Obviously, we've got a, a three to 5,000 ton stockpile sitting there. So that's right. a nice early win for us. And we're going to see how, the, how that stacks up. But, yeah, that new equipment all up on site, funded through our existing arrangements and operating in that um, very early in Q2 in, in the second half of April. Okay, and funded all through QGC? Through that, that arrangement or through, and through uh, some of their supplies. So we will either look to do it directly through QGC or we will have direct funding facilities with those equipment suppliers. Clearly, we've got a fair bit of their gear up at Blesberg already. Sure. So um, we've, I guess through that QGC relationship, we've actually positioned ourselves to be quite a good credit counterparty Okay. When it comes to securing brand new um, tier one mining equipment, so okay, probably Good. probably not what any junior company our size would would be able to achieve, I guess, as well. So it's a, a great win for us, indeed. And payback twelve to fifteen months, so fairly rapid then. Yeah, look, I mean, if you do your rough numbers of a seventy percent margin on five thousand mm -hmm. tons, you're generating three and a half thousand dollars a month of free cash flow. Uh, you start apportioning that to us, you start repaying our initial kind of outlay. And yes, and that's on our kind of conservative, call it base case assumptions. So we're expecting our full, call it capital investment, plus uh, acquisition funding to be well repaid within that 12 to 15 month time frame. Okay. Well, another one to follow for Marula Mining then. Thank you very much, Jason, for your time today. We do want to catch up on some of the other projects. What can you tell us what's going on? Anything to follow fairly soon on these other projects? Or Yeah, I, I made some comment on social media about it being Mad March. Yes. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's certainly looking like that. There's a lot of news due on Blesberg. Clearly, we've got um, some, some permitting news to put out very, very shortly. We've got, which is obviously... Very positive for the long-term operations that we're, we're looking at establishing there, the big open flip mine and, and so on. We've clearly got news on the offtake, and uh, I'm just wrapping that up now. So we're, we're clearly looking forward to that getting released to the market um, okay. early next week. Uh, we've got exploration results there from the drilling, from the satellite imagery work, from the geophys work. So that's on, on Blesberg, I guess, alone. Um, we've taken the view in South Africa as well, Mark, that given what we've achieved at Blesberg on the lithium side, that we're going to broaden our lithium portfolio. So we've almost got, call it in South Africa, it's almost like a first mover, if you want to put it like that, in, in lithium in the Northern Cape in South Africa. So there is an opportunity, I guess, to leverage off our infrastructure and experience and bring in a number of other lithium projects and that'll certainly happen over the course of well, that'll happen very soon mm -hmm. so that's very good the tantalum the the tungsten that also you get associated with that style of mineralization that's another kind of suite of of assets coming through so blesberg a lot of news there and of course recently i was in in joburg i met up with the um the tomra representative there so we finalised the arrangements there for the transportation of the Tomra plant to, to site. So that's the, the second XRF ore sorter. We've clearly had some tremendous success with the Rados plant. Uh, the Tomra ore sorter has five times the capacity. So we're busy looking at how we put that in, in series with that Rados plant and start optimising the production and the recovery, not just of the, the lithium, but we've seen that the, the byproducts, the feldspars, the, the tantalum, the mica, and so on, you know, the value of those products more than covers our operating costs. So, you know, there's a lot of value to be had out of that, uh, that operation. So, Blesberg, a lot of news there. Okay. Um, I could go on and tell you about, you know, the Canusi and the graphites, but let's wait till, till later in the month before we put out some very good news on that thing. Hey? Oh, yeah, you said it yourself, Mad March. I'm sure we'll be speaking a fair bit throughout the course of the month. So for now, thank you for your time. Jason Brewer, CEO of Marula Mining. Thanks very much, Mark. I really appreciate your time. 
If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching. Thank you.